Greetings from Baltimore. Yay. Deep thoughts. You know, all of this goes way back. There's some powerful projects. Thank you. Yes. I've always wanted to do African dance with tap shoes. Right? Wasn't that phenomenal? Oh my gosh. Um, right. <laughs> Craftsmanship um, of the cloth. I love Baba's quote about uh, the, the body as a tool. I, I wrote that quote down myself. Um, and um, yeah, uh, redoing the experience. Uh, that was a beautiful piece that the dancers performed. Each personality and culture of the students shine through the classical training of UCI and the more free and soulful dancing that they learned. It was truly a pleasure to watch. Yes, you're welcome. Yes, yes, yes. I agree with all of these statements and thank you so much for being on here. Uh, we have Dr. Ray, we're going to kind of do it this way. I thought I was going to have more range, but it doesn't have that much range. Maybe I can even put it in a chair and get closer. They told me to um, turn the mic to this, uh, let's see, uh, owl. Let me try to change the mic to the owl. Let's see if that's going to work. Owl Pro, are you talking? Okay, is this working? Is the Owl <laughs> Pro see. on? Owl Pro, as if I, I, Owl okay. Pro is not on. We're gonna have this mic. Let me, okay. Can I give you this mic here? Is this still working? Yes. All right. And we have again our our royal mother on the line. You can see her there. Um, to me, she's square number one. <laughs> <laughs> she is number uh, one. But you know these um these uh what i like to call brady brunch scares stair uh uh, uh chip um squares maybe you can come on over here to okay. this and we can see it better than that you are on live yes mm. all right no i have my film up here and we have a people we have a few people here in uh, the audience as well as online. Um, and I have some stock questions uh, that I could be asking, but I'm going to open it up. If you have some questions um, in the chat, please put in the chat and I will um, ask them or give you an opportunity to ask them. Um, and if you guys have any comments or questions in the audience, before I start to type, try to uh, get my stock questions that I have prepared. Any questions from the students? What did you guys think about what you just saw? That was a lot, a lot to digest, <laughs> right? Any comments? Come on, you guys. Thank you. Let me bring you this one. you know, watching everything. Um, but uh, my question was in the beginning, uh, that there was like a mass dancer, like intimidating people. And then, um, especially the kids, I, I just wanted to ask, like, uh, like why, why was that there? And first let me ask, who are you? Let me, oh, can you tell me your my, name? My name is Joshua. Okay. Because I know who he is, because he's a student of my class. Yes. Thank you for that question, Joshua. Um, so I'll, he's talking about uh, the first film, which was 12 Days in Senegal, uh, my film. And yes, uh, I had went to uh, what is called the Simba Festival. And so uh, the Simba is the lion. And I mean, you might remember that from the Lion King, right? That, that word Simba. And they have this festival every year. It's really a fundraiser for the community. Um, however, the, the, there is a person that is dressed up as the lion. So that was their interpretation of that costume. You saw several of them dressed up as the lion. And so the purpose of them intimidating the little ones 
They come in the center is for to encourage people to save them. And so you save them by buying, by purchasing a ticket. <laughs> so I was like giving all my money because I only imagine my young boys like, you know, I mean, they had them doing some very uh, uh, um, embarrassing type of things, but you know, that's all part of their culture and all part of their fun. Uh, you know, the young boys know it's going to happen, otherwise they wouldn't, <laughs> you know, they wouldn't come around into the center. Um, but yeah, they got a lot of money from me because I was saving a lot of, a lot of young people with, you know, dousing in water. And the story is that there's a, there's a lion tamer that saves uh, a, a, a young lady. And so you also saw the man dancing in front of me and he was holding the wig. So instead of wearing the wig, they will do the female and the male uh, portrayal. He's just holding the wig. But in the community, you would know the story. Mm -hmm. Coming from the outside, like myself, I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> you know, what is happening? But what is that? Well, why does he have a wig on? Or why is he holding a wig? So the story had to be explained to me as well. There's no explanation. They just start uh, uh, giving prayer over the loudspeaker. And then I was like waiting for them to dance. <laughs> I was like, when's the dancing gonna happen? But that was all part of it. And that's that small part that you saw him dancing to the sabar drums um, is pretty much all the dancing that happened before we left. And uh, we were told to leave before dark. Of course, uh, being foreigners, you know, they were concerned about you know our safety. Um, and. Uh, yeah, so that was that was the, the mask or the costume of the lion of December. Thank you for that question. Yes, there was also uh Mama and Zinga, you also had a mask in your yes. uh, piece, right? Can you can you tell us about the mask that we saw there? Yes, that mask um is really special right now because the sister who danced in that mask, she passed away oh, wow. uh just a couple of months ago. Uh sister Lolo. Uh, she was a, a mass dancer with, uh, you know, the stilt walker, Kayende. And uh, it's a, it was a great loss to the community. And to um, we dedicate this whole piece to her since then. But yes, that was an ancestral mass that her husband had made. And uh, the mass was to symbolize uh, the ancestor presence when in every, every scene, that she was there, the ancestors were present with us. So that was the symbolism of the mass being and, and the opening and in the ending and every scene that we danced in. Thank you. Yeah, so mass, as you can tell, and in our class, we learned a mass dance. We learned kakilambe uh, becomes a very important part of traditional dances. You do experience any mass dance or utilize any mass dance in the work that no, you do? No, I have not. Mm -hmm. But I have, of course, seen um, many, oh, excuse me. Yes, I've seen many mass dances performed in different parts of the continent, but I have not. Because it's a serious thing. Yes, we have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Let me bring the, uh, the question. Yeah. 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 Yeah
a mask of some sort and then as they're dancing around it kind of like embodies a spirit and will jump around and start flipping around i don't know if anyone's familiar with that <laughs> but, yeah. That could be several dances, right, Mama mm -hmm. and Zinga? Um, I'm not sure exactly. I know um, I've seen online, um, there's the Zauli dancer. Zauli, and uh, sometimes in Nigeria, when they have their Gung Gung festivals, mm -hmm. they use a lot of masks and uh, masquerades. That's what comes to mind for me, too. And the mask yeah. doesn't have to be uh, what you just see a face, you know? Um, right. We'll see like cascading raffia, and uh, that's what I, I'm thinking of. Mm -hmm. The one that you see them, they're turning around and turning, turning, turning. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, so I'm yes, yeah. and uh, but so there's the kung fu mask. There you go. One more time, Mama. The kung fu mask. You know, it's just full raffia, covers the whole body. It yeah. can ele elevate and then comes down to a really small size. Yes. Yes. It twirls around. Uh huh. The twirling. Thank you. He says thank you. Yes, thank you for that. So uh, yeah, uh, there's very specific reasons why these deaths, these mass dances are performed, why they're brought out, and is very specific to the region and the culture and the country where it's at. So as culture bears, as African American. Or, or diasporic cultural bears, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot to learn <laughs> to be representative of the whole of Africa. I had a conversation uh, just the other day explaining to some young people, once again, Africa is a continent, exactly. not a country. And so you have 54 different countries with multiple ethnicities in each of those countries. And so uh, what we all have studied and what we give forward, we claim this part of our heritage, um, but we know that it, it is specific, it's not general. And so sometimes when I see things, I love the Lion King <laughs> uh, for what it attempted to do, but it is it's like mixing Korean and Japanese and Chinese and Vietnamese culture together. It's not it's, it's a clash, you know, it's separate. And so you have to understand that what you're learning in West African dance comes from even a different culture than what uh, Dr. Amare studies in mm -hmm. Ghana. Mm -hmm. Even though I did see the uh, the dune and the, and the samba and the kinkani mm -hmm. <laughs> over in the corner, mm -hmm. it is definitely different. So let me pause while the students are thinking of other questions. Um, I will pose this question to uh, Dr. Amare. How does your work reflect a diasporic and or global reality? Very big question. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I, the global reality, I, it comes from the fact that I have in some ways moved between different spaces. So my origins in terms of my birth in the UK, my parents are from the Caribbean and I've spent much of my creative life exploring dance in the Caribbean initially in Cuba which then led me to Ghana, to Senegal, Guinea and also to Uganda and as was said there's so much specificity in each of these regions with what their ritual dances and their social mores are. And for me, the decidedly uh, most powerful experience I had was when I was in Guinea, Guinea Conakry for the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and inside of the Dundumba, mm -hmm. it was a Dundumba um, event, at the same time, there, was the, there were these expert dancers from various you know, troops and companies. And inside of these dancers, 
people were just dressed as global citizens. Somebody was dancing with this biggie, um, biggie smalls t-shirt on. Right. And um, so at the moment I was looking at him, one there was one impression, and then I was seeing his movement, a whole other impression. And there's this constant back and forth. Our musics across the diaspora, the continent, increasingly are 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 informed in a constant dialogue we are in dialogue the whole time uh that we've been here and also it continues to propagate itself in so many ways not just in terms of our dances and musics but our foods our styling and even deeper structures than that as relates to our creativity and and by that so so much has arisen in this western hemisphere in terms of inventions and ways of of, of moving uh, material phenomena into a new idea much of this is buried it's not on the surface but when you really actually do the research and you realize where these who these innovators are and many people that you would be surprised by in, in terms of technology and medicine, they are connected to the African continent yes. and have, you know, on one level, the least seemingly the least opportunity to be able to innovate in these ways. And yet somehow there's this consistency. So, so the expression of, 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 you know, what we're calling dance and music, which is really a spiritual and a, it's both spiritual and it's also to do with our life force, right? Um, is is giving rise to so many other aspects of of our lives, and so for me, that's what's powerful about about our practices. Thank you, Thank you. Uh, Mama and Zinga. We're going to ask you the question as well. How does your work, especially? in your envisioning and manifesting of your film, Mama Can't Breathe, how does that work reflect a diasporic and a global reality? Um, for me, I realized a long time ago, many years ago, that I was a healer. Um, um, it's something that was inside my family, my lineage. So but I had to decide what modality I want to use to heal and dance has become my healing modality. So that is what I use to, um, uh, to ground myself, to get inspired. And once I learned how to, um, I got out of the performance mood and got into the teaching mode, I realized the power that it had, that I had to help people unlock the key to themselves. Mm. When people would give me the credit, I would say, no, I'm just a facilitator. I help you find your own key to unlock yourself, to, to get to the essence of your soul. And this is, uh, I learned that um, West African dance and drum, not just West African, but African dance and drumming is a great contributor to the world because, and you see people from all over the world come to us for their great healing. Yes. It does something um, that, um, uh, it transforms you, it transcends you, it heals your mind, your body, and your spirit. And this is why I've remained into it for so long as a teacher. Well, I started as a performer, then a teacher, then a director and producer. And now, now that I am 72 years old, I'm like, okay, what can I do with it now? Because I am retired from the university. I want to hear that age again. <laughs> 72, baby. And, 45 years of that has been involved with the dance. Yes. And it has uh, definitely been my um, preserver and my medicine. I don't take medications, I dance. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, I've lived to see that it works. I used to tell people this when I was in my 40s that if you are consistent in your dance and your movement and your spirituality of it, it's gonna maintain you. So now that I have lived these years, I can say it's true. <laughs> it really is a, um, a lifesaver because it is the arts and the arts will heal and save your life in any form. 
But with the Queen Mothers, you know, this is a group of women who are uh, at least 10 or 12 of us, 60 plus years old. They, they're not all dancers. They come from all walks of life, teachers, um, musicians, doctors, um, just everything, mothers, grandmothers. We're all grandmothers or great grandmothers. And we want to continue on with um, the movement and the healing of, and, and give that to the community. So we are, are called the Queen Mothers of Lamert Park, San Cultural City and uh, Africa Town now. And in the past, for the last six years, we have been um, giving presentations of dances that older women, senior women do in other African societies. We studied Ghanaian, we studied uh, Senegalese, we studied Guinea. We went to Brazil, we studied uh, Brazilian dance where the older women hold the culture together. And because of the, the last two or three years, we weren't able to travel because of the pandemic. So we had to give a presentation uh, that year. I think that was 2020, we did the movie, the film. And the women came together. It was, you know, it was that terrible time when um, we were going through that with George Floyd and that was the, the impetus right there. That was the trigger. So we came together. We wanted to, to express how we really felt raw, uncompromised, and just really uh, not hold, not modify our, our emotions and our feelings to create this peace. So yes, there is, there are guns there. There are weapons there because the grandmothers felt that we are the ones when, when, uh, when there's a, a great funeral or a great loss in the family, the mothers, the grandmothers, the aunties, the elder women, they're doing the cooking. Everybody goes home, the friends, uh, all the, the well wishes, people leave and you are there with your family and there are great losses. There's great deep grief. The grandmothers are there to do the soothing. They're still fixing meals. They're still talking to the grandbabies, trying to assure that we're gonna be all right. We're gonna be okay. But like, and we were listening to the songs and the lyrics in the songs that said, who's gonna take care of us? Who's gonna protect us? We have to do that. We step forward. We're not gonna just go into to the rocking chair and, 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 and yes, there's nothing wrong with praying because we will pray before we go to battle, but we will protect our children and our families by any means necessary. And there are women all over the world who are going to the range, who are going to learn how to protect themselves, how to use weapons responsibly. We're, not, we're talking about defense and protection of homes and families. That's it. Yes, defense and protection. Uh, and, and that is something that we even saw in the descriptions of um, from our, from our um, tour guides yes. that uh, we do believe in protection, we do believe in resistance, and we do um, um, believe in, in fighting for, for ourselves and our families. And one thing that I heard, I was really impressed when he said, and it's still true today, our boys. Mm -hmm. They were the first ones to be put to the side, the first ones they looked at, the first ones they uh, uh, analyzed to see who's gonna go and who's not gonna go. That's, that's the, uh, the link right there. We still have to look after our boys, still protect them. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a lot of symbolism. Social media, a social, a social medium of communication was a uh, word or, or phrase that came out of your film. Um, from one of the scholars at Ghana talking about what dance should do. And so that definitely resonates uh, with Mama I Can't Breathe in bringing the doom doom by using the strongman dance, the rhythm and the dance um, and the- Salute to our men. Yes, the tools of uh, the strongman and the warrior and the wrestler. Thank you for that, thank you for that. Uh, let me, and you, you kind of talked about this already, um, but I'll pose this to you and then um, Dr. Amore can pick up this as well. Is there any questions? You guys have any questions yet? Did someone come up with a question yet? Um, yes, let me bring the microphone to you before I go forward. Hello, Janae. My name is Rena. Um, I have a question for you. 
question about uh, the second video. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, uh, this was being talked about earlier, but I just want a clarification. So there, um, the person that was like in the back was like, um, I would say a mask on. Was that like, I wanted to know like, what kind of mask that was that she was wearing. I didn't write down the name. I'm here for a, a dance seven. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Okay, excellent. So again, the explanation a little bit, uh, Mama and Zinga, about the mask. And uh, that was specifically uh, for, uh, like she was saying, we're in um, COVID. And so every year we have a mask festival. So maybe you can just talk about that a little bit and say how. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, uh, the Queen Mothers have been performing these particular um, dances of elder women for the LA Commons Ancest annual African Ancestors Mass Festival that happened every year in Lamert Park. And um, yes, yeah, so that's how we incorporate the mass figure into the film. But I also wanted to have a presence of the ancestors there uh, to show that whenever there was a, um, um, a loss like that, or somebody got killed like that. Our culture, we say they are transitioned to the ancestor realm. So that was our dancing, our singing, the balloons, uh, the culture, things that we do when we bury someone. Those are uh, all rituals to anchor our souls to the ancestor realm. And so I wanted to have that presence in every scene to uh, symbolize that. So this was an ancestor mask. Okay, does it have a specific name? Is there a specific name that you gave to it uh, outside of it being an ancestor mask? No, I just want, I just chose that particular one that uh, my good friend uh, Kayende made that mask. And uh, he showed me several ones that he had and that's the one that I felt that I got energy from. So the, the, fe the, the mask festival is a call, is a culmination of artistry that happens. And so there's several masks that are made. It can look like whatever is envisioned by the maker in evoking their ancestor. Exactly. And I thought there was some um, Kiswahili on that mask, right? It said Imani, I think was written mm -hmm. on the mask. Mm -hmm. Faith. That was his creativity. So, uh, a mask can be where you can make you can make a mask you can make an ancestor mask and you can it can you can envision it doesn't have to look like a face just like we see a lot of the masks uh, that come from the continent if it's full of raffia or you know, it doesn't necessarily have to have a human face it's just just the the reason on why it's being created and usually there's some prayers that go on. Mm -hmm. It was interesting to me um, in your film, Dr. Amaray, that uh, you guys had the, the funeral procession. Mm -hmm. And so um, that is evoking also the ancestors as well. And I've had conversations about Mardi Gras mm -hmm. and people want to talk about Mardi Gras. And I'm like, don't you know that that second line dancing where that comes out of that's not just arbitrary celebration this is exactly a concept so can you speak a little bit sure. about the uh you know sure i was it was in the it was in the gold coast it was right in the uh area where the the forts are the slave forts are mm -hmm. and um it was after seeing those forts i actually went back a second time to visit by myself and then I saw this procession going past me. I was just walking along the street. I was with a local person and they explained to me that it was a funeral procession. Um, funerals are within many different cultures in, in Ghana. So it could be um, uh, Ga or um, Fanti or Ashanti. They have very specific funeral rites. And often a funeral will take place maybe 40 days after a person has passed away. And this is in order that people can be notified from far away to be able to come to the funeral. 
and uh, oftentimes they're at the weekend. And uh, there's a part of, of, of which is very public and there, thereupon a procession begins and is ultimately going to the compound where the person, probably a person of, of influence, uh, of note, who's having a very large funeral, there will be, you know, three or four sizes of, you know, football fields, which are where people gather together. Um, and up until that moment, those 40 days that have passed uh, up until the actual day of internment, sort of, there will have been multiple rituals that will have happened um, with various members of the family. Um, and in this moment, this, in, this energetic engagement is to bring people. So even if you are not directly related, there is this space where actually this funeral is being recognized by the, the village or, or the town and people are encouraged to come and show their respect. They, they, they are not necessarily involved in the intimate side, but there is this public uh, energetic, which is this idea that people are moving towards recognizing their transition, this person's transition to becoming an ancestor. So it's these, there is a, a massive amount of energy that is being exchanged between people vibrationally, right? Mm -hmm. It's not simply about, oh, there's a crowd of people, but it's about energy. And it's also about also supporting the people that have been bereaved, right? So energetically, this outpouring is also about supporting them through this very difficult moment where the, that, that, that person is, is, is laid to rest, as it were. So those energies are there as a part of a, a larger kind of cosmic force that is part of that life and death cycle that's ongoing. And so seeing this for me was like, wow, what is this? Is this a, is, is this a carnival? Is this, a, and to learn that it was a funeral and then, and then get further information, I, I immediately made that link with, with, with New Orleans mm -hmm. and the second line. And the same way that this um, elevation of the spirit is used to deal with that loss and that grief. Mm -hmm. You see mm -hmm. the words we transition. And this is a, a compre an African comprehension that it's not death. It's you're you're going into a new realm, you have a new place into, and that's where you get. Even now, when we're talking about people that have passed, say their name. Mm -hmm. By saying their name, you're evoking their spirit, you're keeping them alive. Um, so, and, and they're celebrating, especially if they're esteemed and they did great works, you want to celebrate. Now they get to rest, per se, rest in power, hopefully. Um, it, 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 we don't see them as dead or gone you see them as transitioning and that their spirit and their light will continue to guide you. Um, and so the, and that's where you get this celebration mm -hmm. from. And this is the deep, deep African concept that goes all the way back to Kemet, to ancient Egypt and the masks that you see there and the burial rites that you see there is to aid their transition into the ancestral realm and fortunately, because of the great works that they have done and maintain the temples, maintain the masks, we can see their likeness now, and we can celebrate them now, and we can continue to claim them as our ancestors, right? That's right. Um, another question, uh, the question I was going to pose before this is, why is the study of West African dance important in academia? Let me add that for Dr. Amore. It's the foundation. <laughs> I yeah, mean, right. It's the foundation to, to understanding not just dance as an abstract idea, but as a foundation to, to life. That 
movement and the amplification of life, its connection to community, its connection to your physiology, your neurology, your ability to, to uh, engage in complex decision making and complex problem solving. This is all in the relation between the dance and the drum, right? And the song, and the song which relates to language. And again, there's all layers of human communication. And so in West African dance, we have all of that amplified, concentrated and, uh, and accessible. So learning uh, foundational uh, practices and understanding their connection, both to the spiritual, to the, to the healing, to the educational. These are all ways of understanding, not just an aesthetic, but life itself. Excellent, excellent. Mama and Zing, I'm gonna pose that question to you um, as well. Why is the study of West African dance and African dance? I remember you guys came out with the South African dancing um, at one point as well. So. Uh, <laughs> You know, how it relates to diaspora, why is it important, you would say, in academia? Just to add to that, and, and what you said is absolutely correct. It's everything, and it's inside of everything. It helps you understand everything, besides the fact that, going back to the fact that it heals. And you can understand that if what I had, when I was teaching at UCLA, I had students who were engineers, they were doctors. Everybody was not from the dance department. They came from all over camp, the campus. And they would explain to me how they were more relaxed in, and more focused in whatever discipline they were studying in. Um, their bodies felt better. They, when they left class, they were able to go be with other people and infect them with that energy that was positive and, and uplifting. And um, it was just, they didn't understand themselves why they kept coming back to an African dance class when this was just totally off of their uh, major and their uh, uh, interest of study. So I saw, I was just watching and observing myself why this was so important. And this was um, at a time when African dance was being introduced to the, the World Arts and Cultures Department, where it wasn't, um, um, a lot of the cultural dance the department was merging uh, ballet and modern and contemporary dance with the cultural aspects of the world. And so the whole fabric texture of the department changed because people were really coming to the cultural dances where it wasn't expected they would be that well received. And not just the West African, but all the cultural dances uh, from India. Um, they, were, they offered dances from Mexico because they were, the fabric of the campus had changed. And so these people wanted to be in touch with their culture, with who they are. And, um, and they want to, um, to, what's the word? Um, be involved and engaged and be proud of their own heritage. I had people from Vietnam I had students who were um, disabled, who couldn't even hear, but they felt the sensation of the drums through the vibration on the floor. So nothing stopped anybody from coming to the class. And this was so important to their life. And they were able to go, like I said, go into their other studies and be more comfortable with them and more able to handle it, the stress, the work, their just, goals. Thank you. you and I just wanted to add to that. Um, I saw Afrikan uh, on the screen have a startled face so, uh, emoji, <laughs> just <laughs> acknowledging that. Um, but yes, I think um, the place that academia offers us now is to really look at African dance scientifically. Yes. Or to then be able to, in the same ways that people are doing clinical studies with yoga with qigong with tai chi and it is now applied as medicine mm -hmm. that african made drums are in doctor's offices however the dances are not 
right? And when they're in doctor's offices right now, and you're right, there have been studies, but the ways in which these studies have characterized and also dismembered the dance, right? Right. So, right. This, the, we know that the, the richest form of healing is, is, is this, uh, this, this container, which is both dance and music. They're not separate. It is song. It's, it's our universal understanding. Yeah. And I think, you know, there's even um, the physiologist I've been speaking with recently about looking at the, the nervous system and the ways in which we use the spine and how this connects with something called central pattern generators in the spinal column that respond to vibratory feedback. Now, that's if right. that's not in our dances, I don't know what is. Yes, yeah, I think one right? of our, our um, <laughs> PhD, shout out to Colette Leeway. Uh, she's done. Yes, yes. On, uh, that's the, the, the pelvis movement, you yes. know, uh, how to, uh, her focus is a Haitian dance. Uh -huh. And all of that, yeah, is connected. And I also speak to my students who come from. I mean, maybe maybe four percent, five percent of the dance students sometimes are are in my class. So that means 95, 90, 95 percent. I'm sure you experienced that come from other um, uh, disciplines, like Mama Zina was saying, and they always come out of the class. This class has been a little different, uh, transferring over to uh, back from um, online and um, we right played with uh, having our drummers remotely. They were remote from Little Africa, from from uh, Lamert Park, which is, was a blessing in itself, but there was nothing and is nothing like the communication. Mm -hmm. You can't separate the communication, the drum and dance, of having them there, feeling the resonance of the drums in your feet, in your soul, in your body, uh, uh, communicating with the drum when the drum is playing exactly what's going on with your feet and your hands and your body. Uh, it's just, it's, it's healing, as mm -hmm. Mama and Zinga yeah. said. Do we Motion have is healing. It is, it is. Do we have any questions from uh, you out there in Let's Zoom, see. in the Zoom meeting? Let's see. I have a comment. Yes, okay. Thank you so much uh, for sharing space, Ifar. I'm very grateful to be a part of this. Uh, my name is Anna. I am a graduate of UCR dance studies majors. Very proud of what UCR has to offer in specific to all of the specific uh, regions that I've learned about Africa through um, dances, rituals with Nigel Whitson and some underly colleagues of Colleen, Colette that you mentioned. I'm um, really moved by the idea of how the science of not just the movement, but the literal movement of a people that has become to rebel in such a way that is ever so peaceful. Um, because the contrast, I feel, offers so much to teach the children, which is something I've been focusing on to, to better shape our future as a mother. Um, when we can break through teaching the, the dance in the academia of the university level, I just, I just pray so hard that it's a short period of time before we're offering it in the elementary schools, in the middle schools, in the high schools, where you have such conflict and, and stress coming upon our children because we're still not teaching them the way that it was. We're still not teaching them the truth. They have to wait. I didn't know the truth. I still don't know the truth as a graduate. Right. And it, it's so far from where I know we can become if we allow dance simply to be not just the tool but the foundation to our learning skills to teach uh, culture um, specifics because we're very big on 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 you know preaching unity but not recognizing enough that in our differences through the very different countries of Africa alone 
because it is a continent. It does stand on its own and yet it doesn't fall apart through embracing um, these gatherings of funerals and, and fiestas, we call them in Mexican American culture, which is influenced by that, that African uh, traveling to be able to bring together people to have a dialogue, both with music, both with family and food and costume, but to teach our kids how they can be in this world. Mm -hmm. I'm so grateful and I'm very excited even more for the experience of tomorrow to have uh, tried so hard. It was very difficult to follow so much information that was loaded in the video because it is so rich in in history that uh is is brand new it's brand new to me because it's not spoken about and just I'm so grateful for the video uh the very first video specifically that uh, you had to go so far to gather um and even even still um to bring it home it's it's so hard right and that's why I respect all of you women for the way that you tried to articulate yourself and and you and you did so well um accomplished women in the in the academia world it's just it's truly such an honor thank you so much you're welcome thank you thank you for your comment and, and i agree i used to teach in in elementary i teach in uh and all of us probably have engaged and it's it's hard it's heart breaking how the arts are being pulled from academia because you will find if we go back again to Kemet, science and art <laughs> is intrinsic, just like drum and dance. They're just so intertwined and interconnected. And that could be the reason for a lot of our turmoil um, here today because we are separating and we are uh, discontinuing um, a very important part of our life. I see one hand raised. Mama, have, have hello. Good to see you. I'm so happy to hear you all the way from Detroit. Um, we're going to take your question real quick or your, your comment. Okay. Greetings, everyone. This is Sister Mama Head from Detroit. Thank you all so much for this presentation. I am so grateful also to be able to view and watch and experience what you all did and your journeys and travels. Um, I just wanted to say that it's amazing how we can come together and learn a culture, um, partake in the food, the movement, the drumming, and then it's like it's a different world and then come out to the regular world and go right back to the old rigmarole, you know, and that 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 bothers me that we that, you know, when we learn cultures of other of other of others that we we take it, we learn it and it's sitting, you know, we I want to, you know, evolve that to everyday life, like you said, taking it to the classroom. We know that meditation and music is is key. You know, and and we don't learn, you know, in mathematics, we don't learn that that African is fractal, that every little piece is a smaller piece of the whole piece. Mm -hmm. And you know, I didn't learn that in school. I learned that from watching a TED talk from a person that's not even, you know, that that doesn't even look like me. But that's our process. I don't know if you all have ever heard about that. So you can look up fractals if you don't know about that. But <laughs> that, this is the. <laughs> Empress of Fractal, right here. I'm going to give her an opportunity to talk a little bit about. Thank you. Know, you. Thank that. you. All Fractal right. Fractal cold, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Right. Peace. Thank you so much. Thank you all again for sharing. I appreciate it. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. I think we might have one more question coming in. But before we get to the next question, can you share a little about sure. your radiology and the fractal code? Sure. Thank you for your comment, Mama. <laughs> so I um I developed a methodology to teach creativity. It's called embodyology, and it draws directly from Eve cultures in West Africa, in Ghana, but very much connected to. <coughs> and as I teach this work, I go back to the community. <coughs> 
what I've discovered, as you have, is that repetition has no particular value in our culture. And the, a fractal is, I don't know if there are any mathematicians in the house, but it's, a, it's repetition that is scaled. So starting from a, 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 a small form, it incrementally can increase. And these are, are usually geometric forms, which you find in nature or inside even the human body. Right, and you also find them in architecture, but they were also recognized in African cultures. So in our hairstyling, even in the way that a village is organized, like the, the structure of a village down to the shrine. So it's all built on the same uh, kinds of um, dimensions, but then scaled up. And so this also exists within our music forms. It also exists within our, our are eventing right so a rhythm can come from a song which turns into a drum which turns into a dance pattern that turns into someone tapping their foot or nodding their head these are all parts of the same idea it's coming from the same intelligence mm -hmm. and so when you have fractals you have something that is that resists uh resist being uh broken because the intelligence is so interwoven and, and scaled, so it's robust. So African peoples having fractals within their social systems, not just within uh, geometric uh, physical structures, it's actually built into our, our ways of being, which is part of how then our cultures have then spread and have been, uh, innovated across the diaspora. So within embodyology, I teach very much from this concept, which I call fractal code, right? And, and it's how we then really understand what the nature is of the key, right? And then from that key, we then innovate and improvise and begin new ideas, but it's deeply rooted to the core. Right. There's this expansion. So I, I wanted to share that with you because it yeah. connects to this healing space as well. Yeah, very much. Well. Like the concept of a spiral. Mm -hmm. yeah. you concept of a spiral. That's exactly mm -hmm. what I was thinking. Spiral. Mm -hmm. They exist in all sorts of forms, but as I said, even in our social systems, we have fractals. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Sure. And Please look up in biology. Please, I'll put it in the chat. Out. Yeah, <laughs> put it in the chat. Um, she's going to be having an excellent, excellent uh, workshop uh, coming in, in the west side over this way in the, I was going to say northern, northern Colorado. Colorado. I should know. I signed up for it. <laughs> I should know where I'm going. That's going to be in July. Um, so, so she's put it in the chat. Please make sure you look into it. We would love to have you join us in July. Um, but also every Saturday, um, they have activities um, within the organization. You can learn some more about utilizing embodyology and the fractal code uh, to enhance your improvisation and not just improvisation and dance. And we know that dance and the connection with the rest of your life and understanding how to deal with changing situations, how to deal with anxieties um, that especially uh, are very uh, real and strong right now in our lives. We don't know if we can go to the store. We don't know if we can go to the school. We don't know if we can go to the theater. You know, we can stay at home and they're busting our, our door down. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it just helps. Um, in dealing with the reality and how to function just in life. And I'm so excited to be able to um, learn uh, this codified way of, of that is rooted in African ways of knowing and coming forward in uh, being able to utilize it, not only in the creation of neo-African dances, but also utilizing it just in my daily life and my dance practices and being able to bring it here to my studio. So please look for that. I think we have one more um, comment or question from the Zoom that I might have cut off. 
Is there one more question? Okay. Okay. Can I uh, interject one thing? I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, oh, sister. Oh my God. We <laughs> Thank you, mother. Um, I I'll let you go, and then, and then I I no, just go on. Oh well. I, <laughs> okay. What is the story? Um, my name is Stacy, and thirty-seven years ago. Oh my God. Between thirty-seven and thirty-nine, I'm fifty-nine right now. <laughs> and um, when I was 23, um, Mama and Zinga gave me my wings. Um, and I thought I was going to get on this call. I didn't know that you were going to be. I mean, oh my I, goodness. So good I signed see. up and um, I'm nervous right now. So let me think about what I would like to say. I would, I would like to honor you. Um, because you gave me my wings 37 years ago and you're, and my life changed. Mm -hmm. I have touched so many children's lives mm -hmm. with what you gave me. Mm -hmm. And I have rooted myself in the scholar and the, in, in the, in the dance scholarship of Africa because of you. And when I walked in to your class for the first time, I feel like, I feel like uh, uh, Sophia. Mm -hmm. I was feeling mighty bad. Yeah. I was feeling <laughs> kind of low. And then I seen you. And okay. that changed the direction of my life. Mm -hmm. It saved me. And now I am on the front line here in Washington State, working with uh, children from kindergarten. I'm so to proud of you. High school. So and proud of you. It is, I am your work. I, I, am, I am grateful to you. And here I am again in a space where I didn't know what direction I was gonna go in. And here you are. <laughs> and so, so I believe it. I bless you, baby. I love you, Stacy. I love you. I love you. To see you look exactly And I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for your work. I thank you for your work. My question is how do you maintain now that we are elders the commitment? the vitality, mm -hmm. the purpose, how, how do we continue that in these times? What do I do? <laughs> you don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. I just revealed to Makeda that I turned 72 and I had the same question. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I'm retired from academia and my body still twitches and God has blessed me with the opportunity and the ability I'm alive and I can still get up and I can still move. So Shay. I prayed for a manifestation of a sign to show me what to go further. I got That's a call true. from the Black Women's Cancer Survival Organization. Would I be interested in teaching women my age? Mm. Um, low impact African dance movements because scientifically it's been proven to help and heal mm. that. Mm. So, I, you know, that's, that's the step. That's the next step I had to do. They didn't want anybody younger that wouldn't be patient with them, that wouldn't understand. They wanted you. You have blessed us. You have blessed and your community. So I'm still stepping into the dance and it's wow. helped me because I'm working out with them and sweat and, and I'm helping them and it's growing. So, the opportunities are going to come to you, baby, just like it came before. And you're going to have wonderful people that grow up and come back to you and say, thank you. <laughs> I have a job for you. <laughs> so, yeah. Inshallah. Get out there to your ancestors and they will, they will put a bridge out there for you to cross. Inshallah. I say. It never thank stops. you. Never uh, stop. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for pouring the love. <laughs>
I mean, there, I'm, there's so many of us that have that same story. Mama and Zinga. Makeda, you. <laughs> <laughs> She's my first teacher. I, I begged her to be part of her covenant. She was like, oh, baby, we're not having uh, <laughs> auditions right now. <laughs> Part of the reason why I couldn't stop because there were more people coming to say, can you teach? You still teaching? I said, okay, I got to get back out there again. Yeah, I think I'm going to try that in body, in body-ology too. Yes. <laughs> Go to Colorado. I want to share something that is inspirational to me from uh, Ms. Toni Morrison, that uh, yeah. my great inspiration in life, and especially for artists, because this was asked to her somebody asked her, what do artists do in troubled times? And we're always mm. in troubled times. Mm. And we never get a break, but here's, here we are again. And she said, mm. this is precisely the time when artists go to work. There is no time for despair, no place for self-pity, mm. no need for silence, no room for fear. Mm. We speak, we write, we do language, this is how civilizations heal. Mm. And I say, Ashe. 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 Because the last question that I was going to pose was um, basically what are the responsibilities and her forecasts for the African American practitioners of traditional African dances as well as neo African and other diasporic dances? And I think this has been answered. You do it. <laughs> Yeah. Make it happen. Continue to heal. Dance, drum, rhythm is healing. The roots of all dances are found in Africa. We can go all back to that first woman they named Lucy. Yeah. Um, don't be afraid to, to delve into a West African dance class, to delve in into any type of what they call folklorical dances. Um, any type of ethnic, all dances are ethnic because they come from the people. And our, um, at this time, 923, if there, I'm sure there's a couple of few comments that we may want to offer to our esteemed guests, Mama and Zinga. Thank you so much. I love you. I love you. I love you. My heart is absolutely. I love you. And it's a pleasure to meet you, Dr. Ray. I'm so uh, happy to be under the stewardship of these awesome, awesome, awesome scholars and artists. Do we have any uh, last minute comments from the students here that are live? You guys have anything else to say? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. From our Zoom meeting. I guess I would just say that, you know, for us in the diaspora is to stay in dialogue with folks on the continent, right. you know, just to keep our circles and cycles healthy and for us to be informed and be informing and learning and sharing because we are one peoples and uh, this will strengthen us and, and move us to the place where we need to be so that we can actually give this opportunity for the world to heal mm -hmm. so much trauma and yeah. the healing in, in what we do rooted on the continent and into the world beautiful yeah. beautiful thank you thank you mm -hmm. it's much appreciated mm -hmm. thank you for this wonderful yes uh production and I'm grateful to have been given the opportunity to learn with you. Thank you for those words, Amber. Thank you, Mama Hetan Rue from all the way from Detroit. You will not turn that in her G off. Never mind. You know, you, you done, we done met. You know, I ain't turned it off. <laughs> turned down for what? I got that song on my ringtone. People was like, well, I thought you were African. I am. That don't mean I can't, you know, turn down for what? What you talking about? We're African too. Um, so we appreciate everybody that logged on. Thank you, students, for being here, um, for coming, for for sitting amongst, uh, sitting at the feet of these elders. Um, thank you for logging on, and we hope that uh, you will be able to join us and come in person uh, tomorrow. Again, we have a magnificent day of study with the drum uh, from Elder Bade and Boop.
uh, that will be breaking down the dunes and the gym bay. We have a nice mm -hmm. long amount of time for that, um, as well as uh, Elder Alcini Soma that came all the way from Oakland to share with us. Um, it's going to be a treat. It's free. So please tell someone so they can come and get some of this healing, get some of this knowledge. And then we're going to have a showcase performance <laughs> from these students that are sitting right here. Um, so we need a little audience. So make yes. sure you um, yes. come. Yes. Uh, if you're online, again, uh, this is the only Zoom link. I probably, I probably, I will be um, going live on Facebook. So please check me out, Makeda Kumasi. Um, yeah. Uh, so that you can witness and see and, and, and try to grab a step or two or a drum beat or two um, to, to encourage your healing, especially in these times. Uh, and also, uh, there'll be, you know, don't, don't um, be afraid to bring your cash or your cash out because um, as it is the African way, we will have an African marketplace. And so you'll be able to um, purchase some words from Body and Boo or uh, Elder Alcini and myself as well. I'll have a few things out there on some tables. So let's give a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you. Round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we will see you guys tomorrow. Love thank you, you Makeda. You're more than welcome. I'm proud of you. It's a cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We are proud of Please you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Good night.